Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another TFL Car Classic mashup, or is it matchup? We have our returning champ, the 2015 Honda Fit. What'd you bring, Nathan? This is the 2015 Nissan Versa Note. And these cars definitely do compete. That's right, they're entry level cars in a special class that we think both compete dead on with each other. And coming up next, we're gonna take these entry level vehicles and see which one is worth your money. Style-wise, these two cars are remarkably similar. I mean, look at the placement of the badge, look at the placement of the grill, look at the placement of the lights, look at the placement of the air intake. Kind of makes you wonder who copied who. If I had to choose one, I would choose neither. They're kind of too jelly bean-like, especially in this color, but it's where the market is and I understand and respect it. Folks, unlike Roman, I'm a big fan of this design because I know how utilitarian it is, but also I just happen to like the overall shape of these cars, maybe because it looks like me. It's a jelly bean. More importantly, with the Honda Fit, you have very sharp lines nowadays, and they contrast with the very rounded lines of the Nissan Versa. Better still, even though they look almost exactly alike down here in this area, which they really do, it's, it's kind of like, come on, what were you thinking? There are a couple aspects to both vehicles that are unique, and one of which is the way the roof lines swoop, because if you look at the Honda, it's a much flatter area, whereas in it's very rounded here. Now, the bottom line is that they look a lot like each other, but fortunately, at least in the back, they don't. So, you wanna be able to tell the difference between the two? The easiest way to do it is from the profile. Does that mean either one's pretty? No, but I actually think they're kinda of good looking. Now what makes this fit such a good car is that it's small, affordable, utilitarian, and of course, fun to drive. And that fun to drive starts with this engine. 1.5 liters of Earth Dreams goodness. 130 horsepower, 114 pound-foot of torque, and perhaps best of all, 32 MPG combined. So, how does it drive? Let's take it for a ride and find out. Oh my! That's got a little bit more pep than I thought. Now right here is the infotainment system and you'll note what's missing. That's right, no volume knob. You gotta do it, uh, well you gotta do it this way. You gotta turn it on. But her mother saw and an then, ad uh, in a newspaper for this Let me bring the volume down, which I can do from the steering wheel. But you could also do it right here and that one takes forever. Or you could do it from the steering wheel. I'm always reaching for my knob. And don't even joke, you Brits. All right, Nathan, let's take the, uh, let's take the fit for a ride. So you think the seats in this uh, are not as good as in the Versa, huh? I like the Versa seats better. I, I think could, I could see that. They're more supportive. Yeah. Um, they're bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and this one has this weird lumbar thing going on. Yeah. And the, other, the one in the Versa doesn't quite have that. Now, I'm not saying the Versas are perfect but they feel a little bit better. You know, what I love about this car is the way it drives. There's just something so honest and non-pretentious about it, right? From the manual transmission, which has nice short throws, to the weight of the steering, to the acceleration. It's not grand, right? I mean, not a lot happens when you floor it, but then you don't expect a lot to happen. But it is lively, it is spirited, and you do know exactly where those front wheels are. Yep, and I'll say this, that <laughs> compared to the Nissan Versa, I mean, this thing has a lot more power and you can feel it. It's, yeah. just, it's just a really fun car to drive. And I yeah. think that's what distinguishes this car above the fact that it's also very useful, right? Oh, absolutely. And above the fact that it's relatively inexpensive. It is, in every way, shape, and form, a great car for somebody who wants to get a lot for their money in terms of driver feedback joy. You enjoy driving the car. Both cars have that magic Japanese quality of being bigger on the inside than on the outside. And that is especially true for the Fit. With that magic seat in the back that you can fold up and place a bike into with tons of room that 
you would think belongs in a much bigger car, the fit is definitely punching way above its weight class. There is a small fly in the ointment. It used to be that the fit had a lot of buttons. Now they have a lot less, perhaps too few. Perhaps Honda went a little too far on that scale of eliminating buttons. Most of the buttons in the fit now are on the screen. That means that there's no traditional knob to control the volume. And you know what? That's like one of those things that works. So why mess with it? sound system's pretty good. I do not like the way they have the buttons and everything basically set into the screen. I'd much rather have a volume control knob. Um, I mean, I said, well, what am I going to say? Yeah. Rotary dial. There you go. <laughs> Rotary dial. For all you Brits, we know exactly what knob means. Yes, <laughs> damn it, we do. We looked it up. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, it, but it's nice looking. The presentation is beautiful. I really think that Honda sweated the details trying to make this a better looking interior and it is it's a better looking better feeling interior than the Nissan by far and it feels premium you know when you shut the door there's a solid clunk which yeah. is what you want for compared to a rattle which is in certain other cars yeah yeah and uh, it, it never feels like you know you spent a little less money than you should have it feels like you spent a, a good amount of money but you got a lot more in return there's just a lot of value for your money in this car yep yeah I agree I love small cars. You know that. Yeah. It's, it's always been my thing. Yeah, you can just spread the hell out of it. I know, right? I know. 7,000 RPMs. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yep, it's happy. It's a happy little engine. Now, this is the weird part. This is actually a slightly larger displacement engine than the Hondas. This is a 1.6 liter, and it puts out 109 horsepower and 107 pound-feet of torque, much less than the Honda. It's hooked up to a continuously variable transmission, a CVT, which you can get in the Honda as well. This also has an optional six-speed manual transmission. With all that being said, the combined MPG for this car, 35 miles per gallon. That is impressive, and it's better than the Honda. Oh yeah, that is, uh, well, that's fuel efficient, but look at that, a knob. <laughs> To be fair, this has the CVT. Yes. So, my foot's down, 35, 40-ish. It's leisurely. There we go, now we're in the 50s. Yes, and loud. Leisurely and loud. The problem is, as with most CVTs, you have to rev the hell out of the engine in order to make it do things. In this case, there's not a lot of lash, but there is some road noise, and there's definitely a lot of noise coming off the mirrors. You can actually hear the wind rushing past. They look cool, but they're loud. You're exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Now, in terms of its overall ride, it's actually as good as the Honda Fits. But around corners, the Honda feels a little bit more hunkered down. This one, it leans a little bit. Not that you'd be going high performance with this thing anyway. Okay, <laughs> puts all the way down. Yeah, so... There uh, we go. See what I mean? Yeah. It's got a little... There's just a little bit more tilt to it. They're well, very similar, though. Leisure and loud is not as good as fast and furious. Yeah, well, I won't go fast and furious. I'd say the Honda is quick and slick. Oh, that, look what I did right there. Now, I kind of disagree with Roman because I feel that the Honda Fit's interior is actually really well laid out and very clean. With that being said, it's also a better looking interior than the Nissan Versa Note. However, the Nissan Versa Note is more comfortable for me to drive. The back seats are more comfortable and the front seats are more comfortable. There's more leg travel up front. So my big American ass and long legs, sort of long legs, they fit. It's a little bit more comfortable. And bottom line, the switches and buttons in this thing, they're easier to use, but that looks better. It, it's a happy car. This is, this is a good car. One thing I really like about the Nissan Versa Note is the fact that there's a lot of room in here. I actually have, we normally don't put uh, the children, child seat in, yeah. in the car, but the reason I have it in there, that's the biggest one I have, and there's enough room for two more kids next to the seat. And for those of you who have kids, 
that's a lot of room because normally those seats take up a ton of space. A little bit tighter in here. I feel like we're, you know, just a little bit closer together. Which is a funny thing because the roof of this vehicle is actually higher. Uh, many of the dimensions of the Nissan are just a little bit larger than the Honda Fits. Now, with that being said, only 109 horsepower, only 107 pound-feet of torque. And in order to get to 109 horsepower, you have to really strangle it and get it over 6,000 RPM. Okay, so the Fit has a lot more horsepower and frankly is a much more fun car to drive. This does get really good gas mileage. Now, I've been driving mostly highway, but a little bit of city, and I'm averaging right now, according to the car, 41 miles per gallon. That's and impressive. That is really impressive. That is, according to Nissan, it is one of the best fuel MPG vehicles just under all of the uh, hybrids that are out there. So that's great. All right, Nathan, on the TFL scale of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. And let me give full disclosure here. My mom owns a previous generation of the Fit. I'm still going to give it a buy it. It's a great car. What about you? I, I agree with you on the Fit 100%, but I will say this. This Nissan Versa Note is a great car. Much, much better than the regular Versa and a really good contender. But with that being said, buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. I give it a lease it. As always, this is Nathan and Roman Singh. Don't forget to go to tflcar.com for news, views, and real world reviews. Ciao, see you next time. Despite the name, I can't stand the name. Earth Dreams. Ugh, what a horrible name. Yeah, you can put any two words together. Yeah, and then come up with have, it. Yeah, let's, let's play that game. Okay, okay. yeah, go ahead. Uh, satellite Beetle. Okay. <laughs> Purple Pizza. <laughs> Purple Pizza. Mm -hmm. Purple Pizza Engine. Purple Pizza Engine. All right, how about. Uh, uh, oh, God. Throw an Italian word in. Oh, yeah. And that way you can make it sound like a uh, Cambrio Coca Cola. <laughs> Forenza Duck. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Super Lagera. Beans. <laughs>Versa Note, and this is a different vehicle than the Versa. Absolutely. The Note is a step above, right? It's nicer interior. More expensive. And of course the hatchback. Yes, yes, which I, I, the hatchback's the most logical car in the world in terms of stuff that you can hold in there, but the regular Nissan Versa is the, one of the cheapest cars in America, has a really big back seat, and the rest of the car, you can take it. it yeah, it's it, a rental car special. It, it really is a rental car special. This is a much better vehicle, and altogether just a better fit. I know, I hated saying that, <laughs> but, but it is. <laughs> Because, I mean, you know, considering how much space there is, go for, spend a slightly more money and get this car over the regular Versa. I highly recommend. Oh, heck yeah.